Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about something that has made me reflect deeply. In the Linux and open source world, we're always used to seeing technologies that are born, grow, and then gradually get replaced by something else. But what strikes me is that every technology we abandon, every choice we make as a community, is actually shaping what we are and what we will become as an ecosystem. So looking back, I thought about all those technologies that were once crucial in the Linux world and now, well now they're practically dead or on the verge of extinction. And thinking about it, each of these is not just a technical story, but a piece of our collective identity. Let's start with Solaris and Spark. Solaris was a Unix operating system developed by Sun Microsystems, and it ran mainly on Spark architectures. In the 90s and 2000s, it was serious stuff. It was considered one of the most advanced Unix systems with features that Linux could only dream of. ZFS, Dtrace, Zones, Advanced Resource Control, stuff that set the standard and that Linux then had to catch up with for years. But here's the interesting point. Solaris didn't die because it was technically inferior. On the contrary, in many aspects, it was superior to Linux. It died because Linux had something that Solaris didn't have, the community, accessibility, pure open source philosophy. When Oracle bought Sun in 2010, it practically sealed Solaris's fate. But what happened here tells us a lot about who we are. We prefer a system that might be less technically perfect, but more open and democratic. Then there's Docker Swarm, and here the story gets even more interesting. Docker Swarm was a technology that showed promise. The idea was simple. Orchestrate Docker containers natively, without having to learn complex tools. It was integrated directly into Docker, easy to use, perfect for small and medium installations. But then came Kubernetes. And here we need to be honest, Kubernetes didn't win because it was necessarily better. It won because it had Google's backing, because the CNCF put all its marketing weight behind it, because it became the de facto standard before it was even truly mature. Docker Swarm was simpler, more linear, less complex to manage. But the community chose Kubernetes, and now we find ourselves with an orchestration system that requires specialized teams just to be configured properly. This teaches us something important. The best solution doesn't always win. Sometimes the one with more momentum, more marketing, more enterprise support wins. And this shapes our identity. We've become an ecosystem that values completeness and complexity, sometimes at the expense of simplicity. And what about traditional network configuration files? Before Network Manager, managing networks on Linux was a rite of passage. You had to understand how networking really worked. Manually edit files like interfaces, resolve.conf route. It was complex, yes, but it forced you to understand what you were doing. Network Manager made everything simpler, but we also lost something, that deep knowledge of the system that gave you total control. Now we have Network Manager, System D, Network D, and other tools that work magic behind the scenes. Is it progress? Sure. But we're also moving away from that Unix philosophy of transparency and comprehensibility that characterized us. 486 CPUs and early Pentiums in the Linux kernel. Here we're talking about computer archaeology, but it's significant. The Linux kernel evolved from a hobbyist project running on consumer hardware to an enterprise system that needs to be efficient on million-dollar servers. Removing support for the 486 isn't just a technical matter, it's a declaration of intent. Linux is no longer the system for tinkerers. It's an industrial product. X11 in favor of Wayland. We're living through this transition right now, and it perfectly shows how complex adoption dynamics are. X11 dominated the Linux graphical world for decades. It was a protocol from the 80s, full of legacy, architecturally limited, but it worked. And it worked so well that the transition to Wayland, which started more than 15 years ago, still isn't complete. Wayland is technically superior according to many, more secure and more modern. But X11 had a mature ecosystem, applications that worked, stable drivers. The migration is slow and painful, and many users resist the change. This teaches us that adoption in our ecosystem doesn't just follow technical logic, but also practicality and stability. Linux Journal, this case is different and makes me really sad. It was one of the most important magazines for the Linux community. High-level technical articles, interviews with industry leaders, 
insights you couldn't find anywhere else. It closed in 2017 after 23 years, not for lack of quality, but because the traditional technical publishing business model no longer worked in the era of Stack Overflow and free blogs. This tells us a lot about how we're evolving as a community. From a culture of in-depth reading to one of quick fixes, from structured knowledge to fragmented knowledge. I'm not saying it's necessarily worse, but it's different, and this difference is shaping us. And finally, Riser FS. This is a case that shows how extra technical factors can influence the fate of technologies. Hans Reiser, the file system's creator, ended up in prison for murder in 2008. The file system had interesting technical characteristics, good performance for small files, but the community preferred to focus on XT4, BTRFS, and ZFS. Was it the right choice? From a technical standpoint, not necessarily. But from an ethical and community standpoint, absolutely yes. Now the point I wanted to emphasize is this. Every technology we abandon doesn't disappear into nothing. It becomes part of our collective DNA. The choices we make today determine what will be tomorrow as an ecosystem. When we chose System D instead of SysV init, we didn't just change init systems. We chose integrated complexity over modular simplicity. When we're choosing Wayland over X11, we're not just improving graphics, we're choosing security over compatibility. And every day we make similar choices. Rust over C for new kernel projects, Flatpak Snap over traditional package managers, Podman over Docker. Each of these choices isn't just technical, it's about identity. The problem is that adoption dynamics don't always follow logic. Sometimes whoever has more marketing wins. Sometimes whoever arrives at the right time wins. Sometimes whoever has more supporters in the right companies wins. And this can lead us in directions that might not be the best from a purely technical standpoint, and especially not the best from a conceptual, ethical, and philosophical standpoint. Because an operating system is also this. It's a way of conceiving technology. And in a human era where technology is dominant, concepts matter. Look at what happened with package managers. We had apt, yum, Pac-Man, mature, efficient systems integrated with distributions. But along came Flatpak and Snap with the promise of simplicity in software distribution for developers. From a technical standpoint, they're less efficient, use more resources, create isolation, but they solve real software distribution problems. Are they better? It depends on your point of view. The truth is that every technology brings with it not just functionality, but also philosophy. And when we adopt a technology, we also adopt that philosophy. Are we becoming more enterprise and less hobbyist, more user-friendly and less transparent, more secure and less flexible? I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm saying we should be aware that every choice takes us in a specific direction, and that direction determines what we'll be as a community in 10, 20 years. That's why, like others, I've undertaken a battle against System D's dominance. Having alternatives is important, and ruin it, whether you like it or not, works and still works very well. Maybe in a few years we'll look at Docker, System D, or even the monolithic Linux kernel the way we look at Solaris or RiserFS today. And the choices we make today about Rust, about Wayland, about containers, will determine what the next chapter of our story will be. But above all, the technologies we've adopted leave behind forever what we've chosen to replace. Yes, because we often think that a new adoption is simply an addition, an enrichment, but that's not the case at all. A new adoption is a choice, and a choice implies risks and benefits. So precisely, what are we losing in this process? What part of our ecosystem's identity is being irreversibly transformed? Every time we embrace a new technology, we're not just adding functionality, we're also closing doors. When we chose System D, we didn't just gain boot speed and advanced service management. We also lost the simplicity of init scripts, process transparency, the ability to easily understand what was happening in the system. Are we optimistic about this future? Where are we heading and how? Above all, are we aware of what we're sacrificing along the way? These are questions the community should ask itself.